Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for checking out Shinsen 88 Gaming. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a game that I really, really like and I think is unfairly maligned. <laughs> this is Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen 2023, not Lords of the Fallen 2014. You can malign that one all you want. Um, this is, of course, the reboot or spiritual successor to that 2014 game. Developed by CI Games and published by Hexworks. Just came out a little bit ago. And I've put a fair amount of time into it now, like something like almost 90 hours. So I think that I can give a pretty good uh, sort of review or first impressions. I guess it's not really first impressions at this point. But anyways, that's what we're going to be doing <laughs> this time. So if you just wanted basically a one sentence uh, review, the game's good. So there you go. Thanks for watching. However, uh, we'll go into why I think it's good, why I think it's worth your time, and why I think it's a little bit unfairly maligned. So just a little bit of my background, where I'm coming from, if you're new to the channel and you just happen to stumble across this one, I am a huge Souls player. Um, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Demon Souls, Elden Ring, Sekiro, you know, all those games. Played them extensively, 100% achievements, done challenge runs to include like Soul Level 1 and, and that sort of stuff. So hundreds and hundreds of uh, hours. So that's where I'm coming from as a sort of Souls fan. And with that in mind, I actually like this game a lot. I, I did play the original Lords of the Fallen back in the day. I wouldn't really recommend that you go back and do that. I beat it, but I don't remember much of it other than it not being that good. And I will say about this one, this is probably going to be a little bit of a controversial statement, but this might be the best non-FromSoft Souls-like that has come out so far. And I want to caveat that by saying in the traditional sense. So not like games that have Souls-like elements. So, you know, Hollow Knight has Souls-like elements, but is not a Souls-like. Or something like, I don't know, uh, some other second game that I can't think of at the moment. <laughs> But I mean, in terms of games that are just really trying to do the Dark Souls formula and not differentiate themselves too much, this might be the best one. I think a lot of the, the mixed reviews and negative reviews that had on Steam or has on Steam are due to early versions of the game that ran significantly worse and had significantly more issues. So I think it's worth giving a shot. I actually think it's worth the asking price, especially if you can get it on sale. I'm going to have some B-roll running in the background to show off some of the different areas, different play styles, weapons and such. It's going to be relatively spoiler free, but, you know, obviously there's going to be some stuff. So we'll start off with some of the pros and the things that I really like about the game. And then we'll go into some of the negatives and then we'll make our conclusions. So the first thing I think that other than just, you know, mechanically having solid combat, probably the most important thing for a game like this is the world design. And I think Lords of the Fallen does it pretty well. So the world is varied, it's large, it's complex but not confusing, and it's interconnected. So you're going to find a lot of, you know, does not open from this side messages that you later on go back to, open the door and go, oh, that's where that was. In fact, even more so than something like Dark Souls or Elden Ring, you're going to find a lot of later areas that open shortcuts back to previous areas, which is kind of interesting. And I definitely was surprised a couple times when I, you know, flipped a switch and opened a door to somewhere that I hadn't been in hours. And it uh, definitely is a little bit of an interesting element. I won't say that every single shortcut you open is useful, but it definitely was... Uh, going, huh, a couple times. The areas are fairly varied, so, you know, you've got your castles and your caves and your swamps and your fire areas and your ice areas. It's not like there's really anything where you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, that's incredible. What? I've never seen this before. But they work pretty well. They keep the game fairly interesting. And like I said, they're not super maze-like or confusing. Now, in addition to this, you have 
multiple different play styles that you can use throughout the game. I'm going to be trying to show off some of them here. So your stats are going to go along the lines of Strength, Agility, which is basically Dex, Radiance, which is basically Faith, and Inferno, which is like Fire, so I suppose could be your Intelligence equivalent. Each of these paths has its own unique equipment or spells, or both, and they all seem viable. So far I have played a Strength Faith character, or Radiant character, sorry I'm going to keep calling it Faith, just like I'm going to keep calling whatever they are, bonfires, right? Um, I've played that, I've played an Inferno character, I've played a uh, Agility or Dex character using a bow, and all of these definitely seem viable. It just seems like if you find a playstyle or a weapon that you like, you can make it work. As always in these types of games, there are going to be some things that are better than others, but it's a PvP or a PvE game rather primarily, so who cares? There is an enormous quantity of equipment for you to try out in terms of armors and weapons and spells. I'll show some of them here in a minute, but you have a ton of options for doing fashion souls or fashion lords. Is that what we would call it in this game? I don't know. But yeah, there are tons and tons of armors. And you are operating off a basic light, medium, heavy roll. Although the medium roll is kind of like, you know, later souls or Elden Ring medium roll. So it's not like you're being penalized very heavily for that. You'll notice that the parry mechanic tends to work pretty well. And that goes along with the withered health mechanic. So one of the things that was advertised in this game, let's check out some of those armors here. These are just some random ones that I threw together, mixing different sets and uh, weapons to get some, some fashion going. But the Withered Health, where if you block an attack or parry an attack, you lose some health, but it goes into a Withered Bar that you can get back by attacking, actually works really well. It means that you can risk parrying the enemy a couple times for a critical attack to get all your health back, or you can, you know, uh, sort of do a last ditch effort and block and then get away and get your health back later. Yeah, look at all this equipment, and that's not even all the armors in the game. You got a lot to work with. The Wither mechanic comes along with the Umbral mechanic, which has also been heavily advertised. That is the one that allows you to go into sort of an alternate dimension. And you're going to be doing this not just to solve puzzles and access different areas, but also because if you die when you're in the main world, you actually will be transported to Umbral and it functions as sort of an extra life. And what you'll find is that this means that sometimes it's actually better if you're missing a bunch of health and don't have a lot of heals left. You can just die because your health will come back with Umbral health, which you can immediately get back if you're, you know, careful. So it opens up some interesting possibilities. Obviously, certain areas of the map are going to be blocked off depending on which version of the world that you're in. So sometimes you're going to have to figure out, you know, do I want to be in Umbral here? Or do I want to be in the uh, overworld or whatever they're calling it? And I'm happy to say that it does not get irritating. That was certainly a uh, concern, was that it was going to get irritating going back and forth. I really don't think it is. I think it works pretty well, and it definitely is not just a gimmick, but it also is not a necessary but irritating mechanic. So good on them for that. As far as co-op goes, it works pretty well. I've done, well, essentially two co-op playthroughs because... I made it through on mine, and then uh, on my buddy's world. Note that only one player is going to be making progress. However, you can just join in and essentially play through the entire game together. Um, I did experience some lag there. Not clear if it was on my end or on my buddy's end. We were in separate time zones at the time. Here are some of the starting classes. There are some unlockable ones. One thing that irritated people is that there's a DLC uh, it's starting class. However, you can unlock that through normal gameplay, so I don't actually care that much about it. Normally I would, but because you can unlock it, eh, who cares? But the starting classes are pretty varied. Some of them are pretty specialized and some of them are more general. I'm just going to spoil it and let you know that you can respec if you ever mess up your leveling. Uh, so 
pick the one that you think is going to match your play style, and then you can change some stuff if you need to. Character creation is okay. It's not the strongest point of the game. I had a pretty tough time making a decent looking character, honestly. So I'm just going to be rocking a helmet <laughs> most of the time that I play. But you got most of the options that you would expect. You know, you can change the face a little bit, do your skin color, your hair, facial hair, tattoos, marks, that sort of thing. It's better than something like Remnant, but it is definitely worse than something like Elden Ring or Neo 2. Um, in fact, I struggled a lot to make a decent looking female character. The male character, I just kind of threw a beard on there and I was like, okay, good to go. Uh, going back to multiplayer, PvP has been kind of meh so far, mostly due to meta builds. But honestly, I don't fault this game specifically because that's any, any game like this. Most of my PvP encounters ended with me either completely destroying the other person or the other person completely destroying me uh, with no in-between. So it is what it is. So that's most of the, the pros that I have for this game. Let's go into a few cons, and uh, then we'll make our final conclusions. So in terms of cons, uh, the enemy variety in this game is not great. You're going to be fighting a lot of the same types of enemies through most of the game, and it pulls the... Uh, this enemy was a mini-boss earlier on, and now it's a regular enemy. It pulls that kind of stuff frequently. However, it's a little bit hard to fault it too much on that when Elden Ring does the exact same thing. Granted, Elden Ring is a large open world, and this is sort of a more... That is a thick boy right there. And this is more of a uh, traditional Souls experience. But it it is something worth noting. Doesn't ruin the game by any means, but again, worth noting. Um, the bosses, which I'll be showing a boss here in a minute, don't want to spoil too much, so it's going to be the first boss that you've probably seen footage of. The bosses are actually kind of a weak point of the game, which you'd think would mean that the game is terrible. However, they're not bad, they're just kind of unremarkable. Some of them look cool, some of them have some kind of interesting mechanics, but they're just not amazing. Now actually a patch just came out recently to make some of the bosses more difficult. Um, a little bit of a stat upgrade, but also just improving the AI, which is good. I will say that on my first playthrough, by the time I got to the end of the game, I was actually beating most of the bosses first try, which is not the case in something like Elden Ring, at least for me. On that note, the devs are actually continuing to patch the game. When it first came out, they were patching it like every couple days. Now they're doing it like every week or every couple weeks, improving performance, fixing glitches, uh, actually adding content and then adjusting enemy placement and AI and such to make the game a little bit more pleasant. While this is great, because it means the game just continues to get better, in fact, in the coming months, the game will probably just continue to get better over and over. It does make you think that maybe they should have waited and not released the game in the state that it was in, because it almost feels like you're playing in early access in a way. Uh, I think that has more to do with the publisher than the dev. The one thing that I will say is that the devs Per their updates and their constant posts on the Steam community, they really do want this game to be good. And they're definitely proud of it. You can just tell from the way that they are uh, approaching it and continuing to patch it, listening to feedback and that sort of thing. Again, you could certainly say that, well, the game should have come out in a better state, but uh, at least, you know, they're doing the best with what they have, right? One other thing, though, that I do want to point out as a negative is the performance. You've probably heard this. Now, it's worth noting that I am running all this footage here on Ultra with pretty much everything maxed out. Uh, but I have a fairly powerful PC. Not the most powerful, but, you know, fairly powerful. I still do get lag and frame drops in some areas. Uh, most irritatingly, in the hub area. <laughs> so, an area that I spend a significant amount of time in, every time I warp to it, I will lag until my frame rate stabilizes. Super annoying. Uh, the game, like I said, is continuing to be patched for performance, and it has definitely gotten better since the beginning. I'm just uh, doing really poorly on this boss, aren't I? It's okay, though. This is a fresh uh, character, by the way. And this is the first boss, so like I said, you're probably not being spoiled on much here. Uh, worth noting, I didn't mention... After you complete uh, 
new game. So complete the a single game cycle. You can choose to go to New Game Plus, or you can actually restart from your first uh, cycle with everything the same. So worth doing if you're looking to steamroll the game or, you know, get a bunch of equipment that you missed. The game does have multiple endings, multiple different quest lines, some of which are exclusive or mutually exclusive. So if you are planning to do everything, you are going to have to do at least three, maybe more playthroughs. To me, that's a good thing because it adds some replay value. Um, that, along with you know doing different builds and using different equipment, I think is going to keep you pretty busy. And the game is fun enough, in my opinion at least, that you are going to want to keep playing and try everything out. So that uh, is pretty much it. I guess the one thing I didn't mention is I briefly mentioned it about new content. The developers have actually published a roadmap that shows in addition to the uh, improvements and tweaks and bug fixes, they are actually adding new quest lines and new items and such to the game. So that's worth noting. The game is actually going to have also more content as it goes on. That said, I do think it is worth the asking price at the moment, especially if you can get it on sale. But even at full price, I'd say go for it if you are into this kind of game and you're looking for something to kind of scratch that itch while you wait for the uh, Elden Ring DLC. I think it's worth it, personally. I can definitely see where people were coming from in the early days of uh, giving it really negative reviews. However, I think that most of the real negatives in terms of, you know, world design and mechanics are things that are shared by other souls likes so i don't think they're specific to this game you know all of the uh even the FromSoft games of which those are some of my favorite games in existence those are deeply flawed as well so i think expecting this one to be perfect is not not exactly fair not to say that the complaints aren't legitimate but i think it is worth your time so that's mostly what I had to say about Lords of the Fallen. If you are into this kind of game, definitely give it a look. It is worth it. Um, I might do some more content on this game. I haven't really decided if I'm going to do like a full playthrough. If I were to do that, I would probably get the, uh, the most complicated ending. Let me know. I might decide to do it anyway. Not really sure. But uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this little romp through Lords of the Fallen 2023. Hopefully my video helped you uh, decide if you wanted to check this game out. And uh, any questions, comments, concerns, cliches, criticisms, let me know in the comments. We'll go ahead and uh, run through this last little part here. Hopefully I've done a decent job of showing off some of the areas and some of the varied uh, game mechanics. I guess I didn't mention this one. This is a multiplayer mechanic where as players die, their souls can be stolen, or their vigor, as they call it in this game, can be stolen by enemies. And then you can actually go in your world, kill that enemy, and get a reward for sort of uh, saving them, so to speak. It's worth doing because you can trade these items in for some uh, unique items in various little sort of covenant shops, I guess you would call them. Uh, you need a lot, though, so <laughs> it's worth doing them whenever they come up. You'll see that the bow here actually works off of an ammo system, so it's almost like having a mana bar. It's not just, you know, you have 999 arrows in your inventory. It's different arrows cost different amounts, and you can replenish them with an item, but it's not like arrows are uh, just something you have in your inventory. So kind of different and it's an interesting way of balancing the uh, archery when compared with other forms of ranged attacks like throwing weapons or, or magic anyways everybody we'll go ahead and finish off this enemy and free somebody's souls let's see who it is that guy cool alright dark lord we're going to get your stuff back And oh yeah, poison arrows are a thing, of course. Anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little quick look at Lords of the Fallen. 
Let me know if you'd be interested in more Lords of the Fallen content. I may or may not do it, depending on whether I think I can do something interesting with it. But uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit. If it did, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video. Until next time, everyone, take care. God bless.